Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And I am super excited to share with you today these beautiful projects made using the Forever Blossom stamp set from Stampin' Up! Now, I am also super excited to be back in landscape mode today after a couple of weeks of frustration. Uh, my Pages Manager app is still not working, but I found a little bit of a workaround through the Facebook app. And hopefully this is coming through loud and clear in landscape orientation for everyone. Now I'm just going to wait a couple minutes for people to find me and see that I am live and in business here. I'm also going to pull up my video on my iPad so I can see who's watching and who's commenting. All right, so let me talk for a few minutes about the products that I'm using today. Um, we are featuring the Forever Blossoms bundle. So this is the stamp set. It is absolutely stunning. Um, the artwork in this stamp set is just, oh, cannot get enough. It is just gorgeous. Um, does not even need to be colored. Looks beautiful stamped just in uh, monochromatic colors. Uh, just a fantastic stamp set. Then we also have, of course, the coordinating dies. This is a great die set because not only do we have dies that cut out st the stamped images, but then we have, it's almost like two sets in one. So here are your dies that cut out stamped images. And then over here, we have several dies that cut out cherry blossoms and leaves and we're going to use some of these on projects today so this is just a fantastic die set now this is from the new January to June mini catalog it's from the Parisian blossom suite so this suite of products actually is called what they call a mega suite so we have actually two bundles in this suite so the forever blossoms bundle which is the one that I just showed you and then we also have the Parisian Beauty Bundle, which I am going to show, um, I'm offering as a new online class. I'm going to show you all the details and talk about that after we're done making the projects. But just a little teaser for that. So you're going to want to stick around and make sure you catch um, that. But here is the bundle in the stamp set. It is priced at 72 or in the stamp set. Here is the bundle in the catalog. It is priced at $72 Canadian, so that will earn you a free celebration item right now. And um, it is, as I said, just, just stunning. So let's get these things out of the way, and we are gonna get right to doing some stamping. We're going to start with this one. This is a quick and easy one. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to color the stamped cherry blossom image today. There are lots of ways to color this. And as I said earlier, it doesn't even need coloring. It's such a beautiful image. But I'm going to show you one really quick and easy way to color this image. So let me just get some goodies out here. Hi, Deb. How are you? Deb, I got your beautiful thank you card in the mail yesterday. Thank you so, so much. What a wonderful treat. I love going to the mailbox and finding handmade cards. Made my day yesterday. Thank you so much. All right, so we are gonna start. Here I have uh, the cherry blossom image that I stamped ahead of time using Smoky Slate ink and then cut out using the dies, okay? That was just in the interest of getting through this video and keeping you, not keeping you all too long from your dinner. So I'm gonna take my petal pink ink pad and a sponge dauber. And I'm going to ink that up. I'm going to just dauber off some of the worst of the ink. And I'm just going to add just a little hint of color to the center of each one of the cherry blossoms here. So it's just a little blush of color. I'm not putting too much on. But it does not just make those blossoms pop. It's just so beautiful. I can't get over how just that little touch... Um, just that little blush adds so much to those blossoms. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the leaves. This time I'm using Pool Party. Um, I wanted to coordinate my leaf color with the background. So again, I'm just gonna take a dauber and just apply, oh, that's almost too much. I gotta get rid of some of that ink. A little hint, I put too much on that one, but you get the idea. Little hint of the color to my leaves. And that's all there is to it. Might add just a little bit more at the base of that one. There we go. So, so simple, but such a pretty way to add color to this image. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining me. And thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. So we're going to set this aside for a minute and I'm going to talk about this gorgeous DSP. So this is the designer series paper that is in the suite. It's called Parisian 
Blossoms, which is the same as the name of the suite. And um, this is just beautiful. It's specialty DSP. It has champagne foil accents on it. You can probably see that catching the light there. Um, so we're going to use this side. It also has this pretty um, sort of scroll work pattern on the back. We're going to use this side for now. And I have here this I find this this particular pattern a little bit busy I just it was just a little bit much for me So I wanted to tone it down a little bit and one way to tone down your DSP that you find Maybe it just a little bit more than you want for your card is to use vellum because the the pattern is still visible through the Vellum, but it just tones it down a little bit So what I did is I took some of the Magnolia Lane uh, Vellum so this is from the annual catalog. It's in petal pink comes in two other colors as well in the pack and I die cut using the largest scalloped rectangle from the so sweetly stitched or stitched so sweetly dies and then I ran it through with the scripty embossing folder and it just adds I can show you a little bit closer some really nice texture to it and the other cool thing about embossing with this is that it makes it so you can glue these onto your card without having to worry about hiding the adhesive. One of the challenges with um, using with vellum is sometimes that we have to try to be really strategic about where we put our adhesive because we want to hide it. We don't want it to show through. Well, the nice thing about embossing the vellum is that you're not going to see. So I just put a little bit of fast fuse there. Just make sure this is somewhat centered. And you're going to see when I stick that down, you can't see where that tape was. Okay, I've just stuck it right on there. It's crooked, but you know, good enough. All right, then I'm going to take a little bit of this beautiful petal pink ribbon. So this is also from the same suite. This is actually a piece that I already had cut. So I'm going to take a glue dot. And hello, Huda. How are you doing? Hope you're having a good week. I'm just going to add a glue dot to either end of my, oh, come on, stick to my ribbon there, glue dots. It's cold in here. When glue dots get cold, they don't like to stick. My hands are freezing too, so we'll see how well they work. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm just gonna lay it sort of across the bottom third, maybe bottom quarter of the um, the vellum here, okay? So I'm just gonna lay it across and then wrap the ends around and stick them to the back, okay? That's why I put the glue dots on to hold my, my ribbon in place, okay? Then I'm ready to glue this onto my card base. So here I have a petal pink card base. Um, it is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half so I'm gonna fold along that score line crisp it up with my bone folder and then I'm going to add a bit of adhesive to the back of my DSP panel did I mention the size of this DSP panel I don't think I did it is four come on fast fuse work with me there we go um, it is four by five and a quarter inches, okay? And as I said, this is the largest um, scalloped rectangle from the Stitch So Sweetly dies, okay? Just so you can get an idea of sizing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue that DSP panel to the front of my card, just like that, okay? Now I'm ready to stamp my sentiment. Whoop, I just dropped a gem. Don't lose the bling. All right, so here I have a little half inch strip of Whisper White. Now this again is from when I cut my layers. So when you were cutting an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock and you cut four by five and a quarter inch panels, which is almost a quarter of a sheet, you're left with a whole lot of little half inch strips, okay? Now these are awesome little things that you don't wanna throw out because they make fantastic little sentiment banners. Hi Cheryl, thanks for tuning in today. Sorry, I just, and Gail is here. Sorry, I haven't been looking at comments. I've been too focused on what I'm doing here. I gotta say hi to you guys. All right, so this time I'm gonna bring in some basic gray ink. And I'm instead of doing a Mother's Day card, I'm gonna switch it up and do a happy birthday card because this one would work for, for both. It could work for sympathy. There's all kinds of options. Could work, would make a beautiful Easter card as well. So I'm gonna ink up. This happy birthday sentiment is actually from the Music in My Heart stamp set, which is rather close, near and dear to my heart as a music teacher. Um, and I'm gonna move this down just a titch so I can see where I'm stamping and try to get it relatively centered. Not too bad. And then I'm going to use my magical tailored tag punch to create my banner ends. Okay, so for those who haven't seen this before, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'm gonna take my, my strip here. I'm gonna feed it into the top of my punch, okay? And I can, can you see, I can see the sentiment there. I'm gonna back it off a little bit and then punch to create my little banner end. 
okay? Now on this end, I wanna leave a little extra space because what I'm gonna do is actually feed it through my little um, spray of flowers there, okay? So I need a little bit of extra space, so I'm gonna back, I'm gonna put it in probably, I don't know, we'll just guess. We can always take off more. Oh, that looks good. That works for me, works for you, we're good. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and thread this. So in the die cut, you'll see there's this little window here. So I'm just gonna kind of thread that through like that, okay? Now I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back so that I can adhere it just temporarily. And then we're gonna stick the whole thing onto the card, okay? So that's stuck on there. Now we're gonna take and pop that whole thing up. So we'll grab some dimensionals. So we'll just add a few along our strip, as well as to the back of the flowers. We'll put one more over here. There we go, and we'll get rid of our backings. I am having a good week, Huda, thank you. It has been a busy one, but it has been a good one. All right, so now I'm gonna put this on the front of my card and I wanna make sure that I'm not completely covering my ribbon. Um, I did put my ribbon a little bit higher on this one than I did on my sample, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna put it right about there and just press that into place. Super simple, right? And then here I have a pre-tied bow. This was left over from a, another kit from a class I did. So I'm not gonna show you how to tie a bow on this one. Sorry, folks, I will show you later. Don't worry. You, I'm not going to leave you without your bow tying lesson this week, and my glue dots have exploded on me here. Where are we? Here we go. So we're going to just grab a glue dot. So I'm just pressing the knot of the bow into the glue dot, and I'm going to adhere it just to the base. Whoop, that's over just a little far. I'm going to cover up my H just at the base of the flowers there. And you know what? I'm going to turn that so that it's this way like that better okay and then the last little touch is a bit of bling I forgot my take your pick so I'm gonna use the tip of my scissors to place my my rhinestones so these are the champagne uh, rhinestones right now these are on back order um, but they will come back in stock so never fear they will be back just can't get them right now and um, they come in three different sizes so I'm using one of each size so a large a medium and a small to add my little bit of bling here Okay. Hi, Arlene. Hi, Sandy. How are you guys doing? It is a beautiful sweet Arlene. I love it. It's okay. Don't worry. I am so used to having my name misspelled. <laughs> it, it is something my mother cursed me with forever by spelling my name with two E's. Now I'll just quick show you what I did on the inside of my sample. I added, this is again a Mother's Day card, right? So I added a sentiment from, I can't remember. This is a th from a thank you sent. Another thank you I think it's from. A big thank you is what it's from. And then I stamped that um, cherry blossom image again. And look at how beautiful it is just in the gray. Such a pretty image. So that is card number one. Done and done. All right. You like that one? I hope so. Okay. Moving on to card number two. We're going to make this one. Now I posted this one yesterday and I got lots of people who love this card. So I'm glad you like it. I'm going to show you how to color this one using Stampin' Blends. Now I said there's lots of ways to color these this image, right? And uh, the Stampin' Blends are always a great way to color. <laughs> My favorite way to color. Um, but as I said, if you want to be quick, just using a sponge dauber like we did on the last card and adding just a little blush of color is a great way to add quick color to this image. So here... I have, let me just get these out of the way, a couple of these the images that I colored ahead of time, but I left part of it uncolored because I wanted to show you how I did it. And it's really straightforward. There's not much shading or blending at all on this one. Thanks, Deb. I'm glad you liked that last one. Um, so I stamped this image in Smoky Slate. So many of us have been told, all of us I'm sure have been told, that when we use the stamp and blends, we have to stamp with Memento Black ink. And that is true. Okay, however, there are some classic inks that can be used with the alcohol markers that don't bleed or run when you use the alcohol ink. Okay, and Smoky Slate is one of them, which is wonderful because it gives you these nice soft stamped images. So I'm going to color this last blossom here. I'm going to start with my light pool party. So I'm just going to color the whole blossom with my light pool party. 
And this is really quick. I'm not doing a whole lot of blending. Because the stamped image has so much beautiful cross hatching and shading, there's not a lot you need to do to pretty these up. They are just beautiful the way they are. So there, I've just added that layer of light. And then I'm just gonna come in with the dark and I'm just going to add shadow to the center. That's all I'm doing on this one, okay? Just add a little bit of shadow to the center of the flower and that is it. Now I'm not gonna worry about coloring the rest of this because this is actually going to get used down near the bottom and I'm not gonna need the whole thing on my card. But super, super quick and easy to color these with the blends. All right, okay, so let's get to putting this one together. So here I have a piece of the same DSP. This is a different pattern in the pack. It has this beautiful scripty pattern with the champagne foil on one side. And then the other has the beautiful cherry blossom image in Pool Party. So I decided to use this side, even though I love this side. We're gonna use this one for this card. Again, this is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And then here I have same pattern, but I am going to use the scripty part or scripty pattern for this particular piece. This is cut to two by five and a quarter. Okay, so two by five and a quarter. And again, I'm still continuing with my addiction to that awesome stitched scallop border die. Um, this is from the Be Mine stitched dies. So these are from the annual catalog that cut this pretty border. So we're going to first add that border to our... DSP. So I'm going to run a little bit of fast fuse along the long edge of my um, two inch strip here. And I'm going to go ahead and just layer the scalloped die cut border along the long edge. Okay, so one side and the other. Now, just a, what I have found if you if you were using this particular die. I find it easier if I cut my piece um, a little bit longer than I actually need. Makes it easier to get this lined up and then you can just come back in afterwards and trim off the excess. I just find it easier than trying to get um, something that's precisely measured lined up. Okay, that's just my own um, little tidbit of advice for you. You can choose to take it or leave it. <laughs> okay, so there is, isn't that pretty? Oh, love it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and glue this right down the center of our larger panel. So I'm going to add a little bit more fast fuse to the back of that piece. And we're going to glue it right in the middle. So I'm going to use my grid paper as a guide here and help me get it straight and centered. Sort of, ish, kinda, not really, that's okay. Centered is not required. Um, so there we have, okay. And then we're gonna take some of that beautiful ribbon and we're gonna add a little bit more. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna get rid of all this excess on here. Got too much tape left over there. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take my, the end of my ribbon and I'm gonna press it into a glue dot. Come on. And pick up the glue dot and then I'm gonna lay it across the front of my card like this okay lengthwise and wrap the ends and then trim off the excess set that aside and grab another glue dot these glue dots do not want to behave today man they have a mind of their own kind of like some of my students today <laughs> All right, so now we are ready to glue this onto our card base. Okay, so just like last time, um, we have a four and a quarter by 11 inch card base. Okay, so this is half of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. I'm scored in the middle at five and a half and folding along my score line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue that DSP panel to the front of my card. All right. So we'll pop this on just like that. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to add our beautiful cherry blossoms. So we're gonna add some kind of coming down from the top and up from the bottom, okay? And I actually kind of like that this isn't perfectly centered because it kind of works with the whole vibe. I did it on purpose, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> So we're going to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our cherry blossoms. You can certainly use uh, Tombow or whatever adhesive um, is your favorite. And we're going to glue this. I'm going to have the leaves or the, the stem kind of extending a little bit off the top. That's okay. We're going to cut it off in a minute. 
Okay, so it's gonna stick on like that. And then my other one is gonna come on from the bottom. So again, I'm just gonna add a little bit of adhesive. I don't need to worry about the bottom end because it's gonna get trimmed off. So we'll add just a little bit here, like that, okay? Then, actually, I don't need to trim much off that one at all. That one's okay. I'm just gonna trim off the bottom here. So I'm just gonna open up my card, and then it's easy to see where the edge is, and it can just snip it right off there, okay? And I'm gonna add just a little glue dot under that one little bit so that it lies flat. There we go, and I do need to color that little itty bitty bit of flower there. So I'm just gonna add a bit of color to that. There we go. Look at that, done and done. Okay, so we'll get rid of that, and now we're gonna stamp our sentiment. So sometimes I have a hard time deciding what color to stamp my sentiment on. Does anybody ever have that problem? <laughs> I do all the time and sometimes I realize that the best option is to actually stamp it on the DSP that I used elsewhere on the card. So that's what I did for this particular one. So here I have just a narrow strip scrap of the same DSP and we're going to use this beautiful always and forever sentiment from the Forever Blossom stamp set and I'm going to stamp in smoky slate ink. So I'm going to ink up my stamp and I'm going to stamp it on my DSP. And then I'm going to use the Label Me Fancy, which is this one. I learned the names, Label Me Fancy Punch. This is one of the new punches in the, uh, the mini catalog. And I'm going to, first of all, first off, trim off this little bit so I can reach it with the punch. And we will slide it in there, center the image, right about there, and pop it out, just like that. Okay. Alrighty, now this is going to get glued onto a, this is the Label Me Lovely. No, Label Me Fancy and Label Me Lovely. This is Label Me Lovely, I think. And this one is going to get um, popped up on here. Now, let me just talk about this label for a minute. It's just cut from Whisper White cardstock, but what I did is I actually embossed it before I punched it using the Parisian Flourish embossing folder, which is another element in this mega suite. So I, I, I punched it so that I got the very center of the embossed image um, inside the punch so that I could layer that and kind of have the little flourishes sort of accentuating my sentiment. Okay, so I'm going to put that on with a couple of dimensionals. And we'll get rid of our backings. And we're going to pop that on. Now, which way did I do this? I did it this way. I'm going to pop that on centered on my tag like that. These two punches are made for each other, literally. Okay, they're made to layer together and they just layer beautifully. Okay, now this is going to go on to our card again with some dimensionals. I was went all out on the pop today and we're going to add, whoopsie, that one's okay. I got to watch where I'm placing my dimensionals. Don't want to see them. All right, so we're going to get rid of our backings and we're going to pop this onto the front of our card just like this. And I want to center it on that um, DSP strip in the background. So I'm going to put it right about there. Okay. And then I have another little blossom. This is the single blossom that I stamped and colored using um, the same, same colors of blend. So the, the light and the dark pool party. I'm going to add a little glue dot to the back and just kind of tuck it in. So it's kind of coming off my my sentiment label. And then we're gonna do a bow. Where'd I put my ribbon? There it is, hiding under my sample. All right, here's your bow tying lesson, everybody. Paying attention now. Okay, so first of all, this is this ribbon is a really nice size for tying bows, okay? It's quarter inch ribbon, which is really, really nice to work with. Um, so I'm gonna hold my ribbon between my index and middle fingers, okay? I'm then going to pinch it to make loops with my um, thumb and index on both hands, okay? So I have two loops. Notice the ribbon isn't twisted, it's flat. I'm not letting it twist, okay? I'm not doing my loops like a ribbon of hope this way. They are flat, okay? That is really important to getting a nice flat bow. Okay, hi Jill, how are you doing? So now I'm gonna take my left loop, I'm gonna cross it over the right and bring it around and through. And as I do that, I get a pretty little bow. So then it's just a matter of playing with your loops and getting them to the size you want. Okay, and it's important as you are playing with your loops to keep tightening, right? We don't want it to get too loose and then the bow will fall apart. So we want to make sure that we have a nice tight knot. And there's my pretty little bow. Okay, 
Easy peasy. Don't be afraid of ribbon because you're afraid of bows. Don't be afraid of bows. They're great. They're easy. All right, so here's my bow. I'm gonna take and press it onto a glue dot. Hi, Martine, how are you? I'm gonna press that onto a glue dot and we're gonna add it just at the top of our little sentiment label there. Okay, and then of course the last touch is some more bling. Where'd I put my bling? There it is. So here is what's left of a sheet of, this is I think my third sheet of these rhinestones. I kind of love them. And uh, it's a good thing I stocked up before they went on back quarter. Um, I'm gonna add just three little rhinestones. What I see when a lot of people use bling, they kind of overdo it. Don't overdo the bling. It loses its effectiveness if you put too many rhinestones on. So keep in mind when you're designing that your eye, the human eye, likes things in odd numbers. So threes, fives, sevens. Okay, so my go-to number for when adding um, any of these kinds of embellishments is three. Sometimes, occasionally I'll do five, um, but most often it's three. Okay, and there is your finished card. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't pull out my magical wink of Stella. <laughs> oh, Martina, I don't know about the queen of bows, but they're easy. I'm trying to make everybody the queen of bows because they're easy, easy, easy. All right, so wink of Stella to the rescue. We're going to add... Whoa, Okay, anybody ever had that happen to their Wink of Stella? It's simply my lid has come apart. So the part that actually seals inside here has come unglued. That's okay, still still seals, still works. So I'm gonna take and add just a little bit of shimmer shimmer to my blossoms because I can and because it's pretty and you can never have too much shimmer. So we're just gonna take and add a little bit to each one of my little blossoms here and that's just going to sparkle and shine and be so so pretty this would make a beautiful wedding card this with this I intended for this to be anniversary card um, this would be a lovely sympathy card an Easter card so many possibilities for this one hi Laura Bart how are you doing now I'm just gonna show you really quickly what I did on the inside of my sample so very similar to the last card I really love this image stamped in gray I just think it's so, so pretty. I want to design a card just with it stamped in gray. It's so pretty. Um, and again, another sentiment from the Forever Blossom stamp set. Okay, so there is card number two. Done and done. Let's set that aside. Where did I put my other two? I'm losing it. All right. And now we're on to number three. Number three is this one. I wanted to show you just how fantastic the dies in this set are. So remember how I said we have dies that cut the stamped images and then we have dies that cut um, shapes all on their own. Thanks, Laura. I'm glad you like that card. So here I am featuring those dies. They are awesome. So I'm gonna show you just how awesome they are. Like this card, <laughs> All the work is done with the die cuts. There's only the only stamping on here is the sentiment. Okay, super super simple. All right, so we're gonna take just a piece of white cardstock, and we are going to stamp our sentiment. So wishing you a long life to together filled with love and promise. And I'm gonna pull back out that smoky slate ink because it just works with these soft soft pastel colors. And we're gonna stamp that just on some scrap white. It's not really scrap, but it was all I had at the time. And I'm gonna take my two inch circle punch and I am going to punch that out. So I'm gonna center it in the punch window and just pop that out, okay? Alrighty, that's it for stamping on this card, told ya. It was really, it's really, really easy. Okay, so here I have another piece of that same DSP. I think this is my favorite pattern in the pack. I have used, <laughs> <laughs> Lots of it. Um, so again, this is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And here I have some labels. Now these are cut using the painted labels dies. So these are part of the um, Peaceful Poppy Suite. And these are the dies that coordinate with the Peaceful Poppy stamp set. They're called paint, or sorry, painted poppies. And this is the painted labels dies. <laughs> Too many peas all in a row. Hi, Deneen, how are you doing? So originally I just had the smoky slate. So I originally had this and it was pretty, but I felt like it was a little bit too blah. So I cut another label in Pool Party and purposely offset it so that they, the dyes don't match up. And look at how that just pops. It looks like a little bird's nest now. So that's what I decided to do. So we're going to take our label, or sorry, our sentiment um, circle, and we're going to add a little bit of Tombow if it decides to work today. Maybe it's not. Oh, there it goes. It was clogged. 
We may just have to take a little bit off that because that's a lot of Tombow. We'll put some on there. And we're going to pop that onto here and center it. Okay, now the two inch circle does cover up the stitching detail on this label. Um, the one and a quarter inch will fit quite nicely and you'll still see the stitching. However, one and a quarter would not fit my sentiment. So that's why I had to go with two. So now I'm going to purposely ensure that the two um, dies don't match up. So I want my smoky slate and my pool party to be offset. So it kind of looks like a bird's nest. Okay, just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to build my little nest here, my little bouquet. So this is going to get adhered using some dimensionals. We're going to put that on first. So we'll just add three dimensionals to the back of my little label here. And we're going to pop that on right about there. Okay. Next, I have the branch. So this is cut using that really oddly shaped die. When I first saw the die, it was like, what the heck does that do? <laughs> it's cut using this die, okay? It's to cut our branch. And so we're gonna go ahead and adhere that. Now I'm just gonna use a couple of glue dots to kind of tack it in place. The glue dots are gonna be hidden once I add all my flowers. So I'm not really worrying about trying to hide the glue dots or roll them so that they're not seen. Um, I'm just more interested in tacking it in place on my little nest here. There we go. So we're just going to tack that on right about there for now. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how I put together these little blossoms. So there are two different sizes of these flowers. So there's a slightly larger one, two dies or sorry, two dies of that. And then there's a, a smaller one. Okay. There's also little itty bitty ones, but we're going to focus on these ones. And so I cut them from Whisper White cardstock. And then to add that little blush of color again, I'm going to pull out my petal pink ink pad and my dauber. And again, I'm going to just add just a little titch, a little blush of color in the center. And that's all it takes to make these, these really, really pretty blossoms. So now I have one of the stamens. So again, this is another die in the set. I've cut it from champagne foil. And to adhere these, I use just the teeniest little bit of Tombow. Now, sometimes you know how you get goop on the end of your Tombow? See how that's kind of messy? Well, it's great because then you can just take your die and just rub it in that little bit of goop and it's just enough adhesive to adhere that little stamen in place. Okay, you need next to no glue to, to glue that. Okay, so there are my adorable little cherry blossoms. Now, these are going to get adhered and I'm going to have two smalls and the large one in the middle. So I have a whole bunch of leaves. So these again are cut using the same set of dies from that champagne foil. So we're going to, I'll just lay them all out here for you. So there are, there's actually three different sizes. There's an itty bitty teeny leaf as well, but I didn't use that on this particular card. So I'm gonna start with the big ones. We're gonna add our leaves to our largest flower. So we'll go one, whoopsie, I'm throwing them around and two, okay, and then I added one more sort of out the side. We'll do another big one on the big blossom, sort of up here, okay? So there is my first blossom, okay? Next, I'm gonna do my two small ones. So I'm gonna have leaves going in opposite directions here because they're on opposite sides of the center. So I'm gonna start with this guy. So this one, the leaves are gonna be going out to the right. So each time I'm just pressing the leaf into a glue dot and picking it up, okay? And then same thing on the other blossom, but this time my leaves are gonna be going out to the left. So one and two, oopsie, don't stick to my finger, stick to my flower, there we go. So I'm going to glue these guys on first, all right, and again, I'm going to just use a, a little, actually, I'll probably just use a little bit of Tombow for these, or not Tombow, Fast Fuse, and we're going to pop this guy on here, okay, and then the other one on the other side, come on, Fast Fuse, work with me, we're going to pop that one over there, okay, and then this guy is actually going to get popped with a dimensional in the middle, so I'm going to put just one dimensional in the center there and we're going to pop that in the middle like that. There we go. Beautiful 3D flowers. I'm not liking that leaf. I don't like where that is. It's covering up my other flower. So we're going to reposition that. There we go. All right. Oh, he wants to creep back. 
Come on, Mr. Leaf, cooperate. Let's pull him off and we're gonna reposition. <laughs> These glue dots, they are strong. All right, that's okay. We're gonna put a dimensional, a mini dimensional under him and he'll have to stay put. So we're gonna tuck him under there and then we're gonna tuck him over there. Now he doesn't have a choice but to stay where I want him. There he is, okay? All right, so now we're gonna glue that onto our card base. So here I have a pool party card base. It's five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Hi, Judith. Hi, Alfie. How are you guys? And I'm gonna fold in half along my score line, crisp it up with my bone folder, and then that is going to get adhered to the front of my card just like that. So we'll add a bit of adhesive. And we'll pop that right on to the front of our card. Just like that, okay? Now, this little guy, see how this is sticking out a little bit? I may have to reposition that leaf so that I can get them into the envelope, all right? Now, if you do not like these guys kind of sticking out here, you can certainly tack them down with a little bit of Tombow. I kind of like the dimension that that gives, but if, if you're worried that that's gonna get bent or ripped, you can certainly tack it down so that it stays put. And then, of course, our pièce de résistance. I can't say it. Pièce de résistance. How's my French accent, Judith? Probably not very good. I haven't had French since high school. <laughs> We're gonna add a couple more little rhinestones here because they're just so pretty, and because I can. And we're also, you got it, gonna add a little bit of Winkastella to our blossoms. So we'll just take a little bit of Winky Winky. And we'll add just a little hint of sparkle to our cherry blossoms. Have you ever looked closely at a cherry blossom? They do actually have some shimmer to them. They're actually quite beautiful in nature. There we go. That's it. Done and done. How pretty is that? All right, let me bring in the other two projects so you can see them all together one last time. There we go. So beautiful stamp set, beautiful dies. Um, not only can we cut the, the stamped images, but we also, my French accent is perfect. Wow, thanks Martine. <laughs> um, that makes my day. Wow, high school French, it's been a while. Okay, um, so those are my three projects. And again, we can cut stamped images, but we also get these beautiful dies that we can use just all on their own. Okay, really pretty. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you, Deb. All right, now before you go, I have to show you, I'm so excited about this. I think this is my favorite online class ever. And I know I've said that before, but every time I design a new one, I fall in love with the project. So I'm gonna show you my latest online class. So you will recall when I, at the top, up top of the video, I was talking about the fact that um, this Parisian Blossoms uh, suite has two bundles, okay? So this online class actually features the second bundle. So the Parisian Beauty bundle is part of this same suite. It features this awesome stamp set with the Eiffel Tower image and lots of fun images that are great for collage stamping and some beautiful sentiments and then of course these fantastic dies. So that is what I'm featuring for my online class and are you ready to see the projects? I love these projects. I'm so excited. Okay let me show you. So we have five projects in this class and in your kit if you choose to participate in the online class uh, which by the way is free with the $60 order. Yes you get a celebration item with your um, $60 order, um, you will get five projects. So this is the first one, okay? Um, it is this beautiful love card embossed with that scripty embossing folder, which works so well with this stamp set thanks to that beautiful script st um, stamp in the set, right? So this is project number one. Some of those beautiful cherry blossoms on there. And then a lovely, this would make an awesome anniversary card to give to my husband. <laughs> Not that he's really into flowers, but I am. So, or maybe he could give it to, I could give it to him to give to me. Maybe that's what I'll do. So that is card number one, just a straightforward card, but so, so pretty. Card number two is this one. So similar color scheme, but featuring that beautiful Eiffel Tower die cut. Okay, and then a cute little key trinket, which just like key to my heart, so, so pretty. And again, some more of those pretty blossoms. And then on the inside, we have a little bit of collage stamping. 
Um, so again, great anniversary card. Maybe he could give this one to me and I could give this one to him. That would work really well. And then we could have them displayed on our mantle and we'd have matching his and hers anniversary cards. That's what we'll do. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so that is card number two. Card number three is this one featuring some collage stamping. This one could be, um, uh, would make an awesome retirement card, graduation card, going away card. The sentiment says, follow your heart. It will take you to incredible places. And uh, the collage stamping features the life is a magnificent adventure stamp. So I love doing some collage stamping. And so that is the front. And then on the inside, we just have some simple DSP. I left the inside blank so that you could use this for any occasion, right? There's so many possibilities for that um, particular image or for that particular card. So those are the three basic cards. And then we have two fun folds. So this one is a simple Z fold. Now it's hard for me to show you, but the way this is designed, it's designed so that when this set st stands up, the Eiffel Tower basically stands on your desktop. Okay. So it opens like this. There's lots of space for a written sentiment. Again, great um, graduation card or uh, retirement card for anyone who is having a big change in their life, okay? And then this one is my favorite. I love this card. So this is our, our last fun fold. So this is a different take on an easel card. So this one actually opens up like this and stands up like that, okay? Can you see that? I hope that... You can see how that looks. So it stands up and there's a spot to write a sentiment. I would love to have this standing on my desk and just write a little, you know, word of encouragement or something for someone and have that just sitting on their desk. I think that would be awesome. Aw, oh, thanks, Deb. I'm glad you like them. I, like I said, I love, love, love this, this particular set of cards for this online class. So again, all of these, um, the online class includes all of the supplies to make these projects. So you will have to have the inks of your own and you will require the Parisian Beauty stamp set, okay? You actually do not have to have the coordinating dies, but let's be honest, if you're gonna get the stamp set, you're gonna want the dies. Get the bundle, people. You're gonna get your celebration freebie and you're gonna get all the supplies along with the step-by-step -step video tutorial and a PDF cutting guide for all of the these five cards. Okay, so that is free with a $60 order. Now, how do you order? Well, funny you should ask. This is how. So you are going to go to linagursa.stampinup.net. You can place your online order at my website using this host code. So ZJY3JHYM. And again, I will post this information. There'll be a separate post on my uh, Facebook page with all of this info. This is available starting today for two weeks until March 10th. All right. Free with a $60 order. Just make sure you use that host code so that I know that you want in on this awesome class. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so happy to be back in landscape mode. I can't even tell you. Um, I hope you are too. And uh, I will see you again next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.